All right, so let's expand on the passing game a bit. Let's go back to the wide receiver room. Somebody who's going to help Trey Wilson. So defenses can't just focus on him. You heard Wilson say, that, hey, defense is going to make adjustments. Well, he's going to need some help. Here's Billy Napier on transfer of wide receiver Elijah Badger. He's a part of a receiver group, you know, that is, man, it, it is extremely competitive. You know, I think we have, uh, after some of those guys that have played a lot of football, you know, Trey, Chim, Khalil, you know, then you kind of get into that next tier of player. Um, and all those guys uh, are doing great. Um, and that, that's one of the positions on our team where some of the roles are to be determined. Uh, but I do think that a, a Badger has made progress, and it showed up, I think, yesterday is where I was like, okay, I can kind of see, um, you know, he is explosive, he is athletic, uh, he can run after the catch, he has a vertical threat to his game, uh, and he's got play strength and he's got length. You know, he's, he's six-one guy, but he's got great, great length, so... Um, yeah, I like the look in his eye. You know, he's not scared to work. He's got a smile on his face. Uh, he told me last night, you know, um, I could tell he was getting comfortable. You know, he made a few plays, and I said, hey, he said, man, this is uh, the humidity is different, right? He said, I'm used to that sun, but I'm not used to that humidity. So he, he said, hey, look, this practice is uh, – a lot more intense and a lot faster maybe than the ones I've been a part of in the past. There we go. So it is going to be different for Elijah Badger, and getting comfortable is my main takeaway there uh, from what Billy Napier had to, talk, had to say about Badger. And, look, of course, getting comfortable in the weather too, it sounds like. <laughs> so we all know, we all know living down here in the South, this humidity is a bit different. And I remember Graham Mertz talking about it last year as well, <laughs> saying uh, when, in the one-on-one interview I had with him about, you know, swappy. Uh, the swap is, certainly is a great term for all the humidity you have to deal with here uh, in our great state of Florida. So, uh, but to me, getting comfortable for Elijah Badger, that's, that, to me, that's the only question surrounding him. How fast can he get up to speed in this new offense for him to, for him to become comfortable and for him to become the weapon that I think we know he can be? It's not a stretch here to say Elijah Badger can be a huge weapon for this Gator offense. That's why he was so heavily coveted by, by, but you know, for, for us following the transfer portal back in the spring, this was the guy that we as a fan base identified. We want him in this receiver room. We've seen it, but it's been proven elsewhere. He's played a lot of college football, played a lot of snaps. He has more production than someone like Ricky Pearsall, who also came in from Arizona state, made his presence felt right away. But he also was a better player in year two at Florida than year one. Florida needs that impact right away this season from Badger. And it may not be their game one versus Miami, but it needs to be there early in the season. You know, we'll see who the starting three wide receivers are when Miami comes to town. But there's a thought it will be Wilson, DK, and Khalil Jackson as Badger catches up. But I think if that's still the case, and... I think that is going to be a battle of Jackson and Badger as we lead up to the first game of the season, early season as well, that Badger, before all is said and done, still needs to be at least third in the amount of touches the wide receivers get. You know, looking back at that chart from earlier, we know the staff will script plays to get an inexperienced player to ball in his hands. So if Badger's still trying to figure out the playbook early in the season, getting comfortable in the offense, I'd expect to see some manufacturers from touches. But it's going to be, you know, for, for, the, for full effect and for full effect early in the season, it's going to be up to Badger to get himself comfortable in the offense. But I think when it's all said and done, by the time the 2024 season ends, Badger's going to be in that group of Wilson, DK, as the top three. You know, I'm not trying to slam Khalil Jackson. I'm glad you know, he's a Gator and making that transition from playing quarterback in high school to wide receiver. I expect him to be better in his second full season, getting experience as well. But given what we have already seen from Badger, I know it wasn't at Florida, and I know a lot of people will slam it's in the Pac-12 or whatever at Arizona State. Pac-12 has been pretty good football for me lately. <laughs> so, uh, but he's done it. 
and he shows explosive. He showed as Bill, you heard Billy Napier kind of explain the all around weapon he can be. It's catch after the run. It's a being a vertical threat. There's a special teams threat is there there as well. So to me, it's just going to be all about how fast Badger can get ingrained in the offense. How fast can he learn the offense? Because I think he's a weapon just waiting to happen to help Trey Wilson, to help Team Ray DK, to help Graham Mertz in this offense. And to wrap it back around, you're going to need these guys to help make up the loss for Montreal Johnson in the run game. There's a lot, a lot to like about that room still, but I still believe you know, Billy Napier is truthful in what he says about learning to adapt and learning to change. I do think changing your offense a bit is in that list of items. And I think we've seen the changes there by hopefully relying more on a Russ Callaway. Getting more speed on the field with Wilson. Kimari DK certainly setting personal records this offseason. And then the recruitment of guys like Tank Hawkins, Abrams. I mean, you can see the vision there. I've, I've put that out there before. But you can see some changes in the offense. Now, hopefully, it will be able to make up for whatever the timetable is for Montreal Johnson. It may not be anything. We'll see when it gets to it. But I, you know, probably expect him to miss a game or two early in the season. So you're going to need this passive game to step up even more. Get your Beat Miami shirt right there, GatorsBreakdownMerch.com, other designs there as well to help us uh, and support what we do right here on Gators Breakdown. But even more so, if you want to interact with some more Gator fans, do so on the Discord at Gators Breakdown Plus. Link is in the description there. Some new members joining in. A lot of good conversation lately with fall camp starting there at Gators Breakdown Plus. One more time, link is in the description to get access to the Discord server. Add free episodes of Gators Breakdown. I know that's a big, uh, especially with football season coming up, but there will be a lot more ads here uh, on Gators Breakdown. So be sure if you want those ad-free episodes of Gators Breakdown, you get access to those at Gators Breakdown Plus.